everybody! For those of you who don't know me, my name's Emily and I'm Binghamton University's MSW intern at CR Weeks. For this week's Careers and Cookies, we're going to be interviewing Fabienne, who's one of my peers, and she works at an assisted living facility. Can you start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your job? Hello, my name is Fabienne Lescouflair. I'm a Binghamton University MSW student, so I'm in the social work program, and I intern at Palmer Elementary School and the middle school. Um, when I'm back home in Orange County, I work part-time as a personal care assistant, also known as an aide, in an assisted living facility. When adults get older, it may be harder for them to move around by themselves. Let's say go get medicine for themselves, go shopping for themselves. So basically, the assisted living facility that I work at is a place that older adults live so they feel supported, um, they feel safe, um, they feel healthy and happy because we do, do have nurses that work there to give them their medication and then the aides like myself were there to support them in any way they need. So about my job, it's simply about supporting the resident. Um, it could be something as simple as having a conversation with them or helping them take a shower. A lot of my residents, they're very independent and we try to force them to be more independent just to help them live a healthier life. But we're definitely there to support them. So for example, if a resident needs help with a shower, let's say they can't get their back or they can't wash their hair, of course I'm gonna be there to help them. A lot of our residents do need that kind of help. Or some of the residents I work with, they just want you to stand outside the door because they wanna make sure that I'm there just in case they fall. Like I said, it just depends on that resident and what they want at that time. Okay, and can you share what education or training that you needed in order to start this job? As far as education, I did my training back in 2014, um, and it was a seven-day training. In order to keep my certification alive, I have to do an in-service every year. And what an in-service is, it's just like a one-day training just to make sure that I remember all of the things that I've learned in 2014. It's like a refresher course, but like I said, it's only once a year. What does a typical day at work look like for you? A typical day at my job is me working 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. eight hour shift. So as soon as I clock in, I speak to the aide that was working there before me, which is usually the 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift. And usually that aide is telling me things like, oh, this resident went out, this resident fell today, this resident has a doctor's appointment today, just to catch me up on what's been happening since I wasn't there. Um, the next thing I do, I usually check on each resident just to see how they're doing, make sure nobody's on the floor, make sure nobody fell, make sure they're all okay. Um, after I check on everybody that's assigned to me for that night, I usually go down to activities because usually activities is doing something from 3 p.m. until supper. They have their supper at 6 p.m. So usually after I do my rounds, I go down to activities and I just hang out with the residents. I help the activities director, you know, let's say pass out bingo balls and stuff like that. And yeah, when it's supper at 6 p.m., we have our own kitchen staff there, so the dinner's already made and things like that, but the other eight and I, we pass out the trays, um, and then we also stay in the dining room until all the residents are done eating, just to make sure that they don't choke and make sure that they have every need satisfied. <laughs> After supper, usually each aide has two showers per shift, so usually I ask the resident during supper when they would like to take their shower because working in an assisted living facility, our motto is that we work in their homes. So we want to make sure that the residents feel as comfortable um, as possible and make sure that even though they're living in a facility like this assisted living facility, that they still have control over their life and how they live. So I always want to make sure that they tell me when they would like to have their shower um, to show that they're still in control. After every resident gets a shower, they get their bed sheets changed as well. We also have a laundry staff, so usually I collect the dirty laundry and I collect their dirty clothes and I send it down to the laundry. Those people, they wash it, press it, fold it, and bring it right back up to the residence. So it's like they live in like a hotel-ish kind of place because the facility is set up like a college dorm. Everybody either has their own room or they have a roommate. But everything's done for them, and the only common areas that they share are the dining room, room and there is also a barbershop there. Um, so it's pretty cool. So we treat them like their hotel 
residents and they're always going to be taken care of in that kind of way. What is your favorite aspect of the work that you're doing? My favorite aspect for my role as working as an aide is simply just having conversations with the people that live there. Um, we have a 65 year old man there. That's I think he's the youngest we have and we have a 101 year old woman there and that's the oldest we have. And it's like, obviously they're older, so they're definitely wiser. I like the advice that I can get from them and I just like hearing stories that they tell me about, you know, that they did when they were younger because they clearly grew up in different generations. So I just really enjoy the conversations but mostly the advice I get from the people I work for and the people I serve. What goals do you have for your future education and career? Goals for my future education, I would like to continue to work within a school system. Um, I just like working between those hours. I like the snow days. I like the people I work with. Like there's different people in a school, the teachers, the principal, the counselor, the social worker, the nurse. It's just like, I like that. There's so many different professions I can work with. Like even right now in Windsor, I like working in the middle school and in the elementary school because it's just like different lesson plans, but also different ages. It just keeps me on my toes. And I just really enjoy learning from different ages, different people, different professions. It's just something that I really enjoy. So I definitely think I want to stay within the school system. And what advice would you give to kids who may want to work in a similar setting or a similar role as you? The advice I have to kids that want to work in a similar setting, whether it's in an assisted living facility or in a school system, um, I just, the only advice I have is just to try everything. Like you may think that you want to work in a specific setting, but you don't know, well, you wouldn't know that you would enjoy working in another setting. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, for example, I never wanted to work in a school setting. I just took this internship to try it and now I love it, you know, but at the same time, I've worked in other settings before. I've worked in the juvenile justice setting. I worked in, um, I worked in an office setting. I worked in a group home setting. I think it's just good to have your options because like I said, you won't know what you like until you try it. And you might hate something or you might think you hate it, but you might love it when you try it, you know? So I think that's really the only advice I would give is to like, you can have your mindset on what you want to do, but definitely try it first, but also try other things. Cause it's like, you may love chocolate, but what if you try Skittles? Skittles might turn into your favorite candy. You might've loved chocolate, but that's because you never tried anything else out there. And you might say, I love chocolate so much. Hmm, let me try Skittles for the first time. Whoa, I love this fruity flavor. Skittles are awesome. Now they're my new favorite candy. So I, that's why I think it's just very important to just, you know, try try things, try different things, you know, keep your options open because you, you might like something, but you might love something else. Because your work makes you an everyday hero, who is your hero and why? My everyday hero is my mother. Um... She taught me that strong women, they bend, but they don't break. Like, she's just a really good role model to me. She's the reason why I'm really independent. She's the reason why like, I'm a go-getter. I go out and I do things for myself. I don't need anybody. Like, I can always do things for myself. And the thing I love most about my mother is like, yeah, she taught me to be independent, but it's like, if I did need something, I know she would help me, you know, like she taught me to like always do things for yourself because, you know, you might not have other people there to help you, which is okay, you know, but like I said, if I do need somebody's help or if I don't have anybody there, I know she's always there. So it's just like, I don't know. She's also a nurse too. And um, working during this pandemic, I can see is hard on her because she works in a nursing home and nursing homes are totally different than assisted living. Like I said, assisted living is like, we're just there to support you and help you become more independent. But nursing homes are just people that don't have, like aren't independent in any kind of sense. So she works there and she does everything for people. And um, I know her nursing home's getting hit really hard. So I know that's really stressful, but she's been keeping a brave face on and she's been going to work every day um, and protecting herself. So that's what also makes her an everyday hero, you know, for me, because it's like, I know this is weighing heavy on her but she's still pushing through what advice do you have for students who are worried or confused about what's going on in the world right now 
the advice I have for anybody um, worried about what's going on in this world or even being confused, I would just say to stay calm. I know it's like easy to say and it's probably most likely hard to do. Um, you know, I feel like just like everybody else, I struggled with what's going on too because you don't know i feel like for me the biggest thing is like you don't know what's going to happen like you don't know what's going on what's gonna happen tomorrow is it gonna get worse but it's like i realize that just worrying about it is what's causing the stress you know like even for me like just like the students out there i had to do work online and i had to adjust to working through a computer every day and it was really hard in the beginning but I feel like as the days went on, it got a little easier, but then it kind of got a little harder mentally because it's like, I kind of miss being in school and seeing my friends and seeing my teachers. Like, I don't want to get used to being on the computer, but I feel like that's just, like I said, things are going to change day by day. Um, hope for the best. You know, nobody has the answers about what's going on or what's going to happen. So I feel like the best thing that you can do is to just, keep yourself calm because keeping yourself calm will keep your mind on the straight and narrow you don't want to be worrying about what's going on in the world every single day i feel like you should just focus on your schoolwork contacting your loved ones and staying healthy yourself and also finding time to like do things that make you happy i know that's really hard to say because you can't go outside and like like go let's say your favorite thing to do is go shopping with your mom or your dad or anybody i know we can't do that i know we can't ride on our atvs right now i know we can't go play in the playground but i feel like if you just find I feel like if you just like try to learn new hobbies, try to learn another language, try to maybe even cook with your parents, you know, um, actually currently right now I'm teaching my dog new tricks. So that's really fun. It's really interesting and he's catching on quickly. So that's something that I'm doing to keep my mind just off the bad that's going on out in the world today. Um, you know, we're all tackling COVID together. Um, it's weird, it's so weird to say, but I feel like this pandemic kind of brought the world together. You know, it, it definitely changed a lot of things for a lot of people, but I think it's important to just stay hopeful and to stay focused on the schoolwork because although this pandemic's going on, we still have to stay focused on things that we were working on before it even happened and also take care of our mental health because happiness is very important. 